Hello, my is Alex here, back with some more Space Engineers. And yes, I am back from my brief hiatus over the Christmas period, even though probably a lot of people are probably still on their Christmas break, but, well, I haven't exactly had a lot to do between here and now. I mean, of course, Christmas was a nice time for family and had a good lunch and got some good items, presents, etc. And all the rest, but yes, I'm back to get some videos out the pipeline, as I have some explaining to do of quite a bit that's to come. Uh, but anyway, before I begin with that, um, speaking of Christmas, uh, I hope you all had a good Christmas, um, had a good time with family, friends, got some good presents, I don't know, I don't know your, I don't know your story, so maybe uh, maybe Christmas was uh, a quiet one, having some wine or beer, and or maybe people were just having a massive party, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, hopefully you got some good items. Um, but let me know, let me know what you got, because I'm mildly interested. Um, to see what uh, what did all of you guys get for Christmas? As pretty much, I just got mostly booze and money. But whatever, I <laughs> I'm hardly complaining. So yes, anyway, I've um, got a brief item here to show you. As I'm going to be making a few builds around this item, and plus you've probably seen this thing uh, back when I made the BFSA. And speaking of that um, monstrosity of a solar array, which is pretty, I mean, this is obviously uh, one of the hexagons from the um, uh, big, uh, big fucking solar array, as it's been nicknamed. Um, I will be revisiting that and rebuilding that in a different style, one that's hopefully a little bit less laggy. Um, but I thought I would release at least one of the initial arrays here. As well, I did that with the, with the um, remember that simple Taurus I released, which was just a simple object that I used to base a lot of my ships around. As I'm kind of, I'm pretty good at taking a, a simple couple of objects and making a ship out of that. Maybe it's just a bit of laziness on my behalf, as uh, it's just easier just to get a few simple objects and then sort of copy paste them, cut them up a bit, stick a portion of that object over there, and just build ships like that. It, it's just convenient to do so. As you will probably see in some future videos, like that cargo ship, which I've still been hinting about uh, for a while, but I'll come back to that in a second. But um, this solar array, like I said, is just one from the BFSA, um, completely vanilla. It's once again, pretty obvious. Um, it's uh, it's stats, if you're wondering, because you might, guys might want to know what's uh, how big is this thing and how does it do, um, something like that. So it's it's got a diameter of roughly 83 blocks. A 504 total solar panels, if I've done the maths correctly. Um, peak output, theoretically, if, assuming it's got full sun, is just over 60 megawatts. Um, and here is the weight, if I decide to just jump into here. As you can roughly see, uh, the weight there, quite a bit, even though the uh, first bit of the number happens to have the, has 666 in it. But then, I think that's probably taking into account the cockpit there as well. So. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to be making some things around this solar array. I'll be redoing the B um, uh, the BFSA. That's going to be uh, uh, revamped because I think that that first thing I showed you, while it was certainly impressive to for a, just a just a superstructure, I would say in, in engineers, it's uh, I I think a lot of you would agree it was pretty much one cluster of four of these, like four arrays that I just bolted four of those clusters of four to uh, make the entire system. Um, but I've got a different idea in mind for this, um, but like I said, this is just one of the arrays and you guys probably might find uh, a use for it in whatever build you're doing. It's rather a large array, uh, all the same, so maybe this could be, I don't know, part of a station, maybe you could um, uh, attach something to the central pillar here. Um, this pillar does have like a couple con um, conveyors going through it, so I don't know, it's just, just leaving um, options available to you if you guys want to Built however you want to build it. I don't know. This is Space Engineers. You know, we all build things differently and just trying to keep the uh, options open. Um, so yeah, this will be on the workshop. Um, so just let me know if you have any uses for it and all the rest. Now, I just want to briefly, that's pretty much it for the solar array, but I just want to quickly um, let you guys know on a few things to come as far as videos for the channel is concerned. Um, so at this point in the video, I would say keep it playing, but you can tab out and uh, do some web browsing or something. Just just listen to me for five minutes. Um, so simply put, I as far as probably, probably the next half a dozen videos are concerned on the channel. Um, I'm it's all going to be well, they're all going to be a lot of like, space engineer stuff, but I'm going to be clearing out my old um, my old like base world because as you probably know. I used to, I do have a um, a simple world with all my mods in where I just build lots and lots of stuff and just have projects lying around, and it's just, it's just convenient that way. Um, but to put another long story short, I am changing my computer over to Intel. Yes, I am side grading to Intel, which might seem is a bit strange, 
um, to some of you, because I do have like a Ryzen 7 system, and don't get me wrong, this has been a great system, but I've been kind of more, this is more of a very expensive curiosity, as I kind of wanted to just switch to Coffee Lake, as I'm kind of curious to see what is there, how much of a difference is there. Um, it may, mainly in actually single threaded, because like, I, I may have all these cores and threads on the Ryzen chip, and while it's pretty nice just to be able to open up as many bits of shite on my computer as I can and the computer doesn't really give a crap but some games I have just don't play kindly to Ryzen but then I would partially blame that on the game itself I'm not a developer so I I, I, I can't fully appreciate I suppose the like the work that goes into try and making a game multi-threaded but multi-core CPUs have been around for so long now and if, a, if there's still games out there that will just pin one of your th uh, CPU threads and ignore the others. I would be tempted to say that's just lazy coding, but once again, I'm that might <laughs> that might trigger some developers in the audience if there's anyone actually watching, so um but like I said, uh, apologies if that did uh, offend anyone, but it's purely I just I mean, yeah, I don't fully understand the whole obviously the process by splitting the workload across various threads, but it just seems after this amount of time has passed it does seem a bit lazy. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ripping on engineers. Like engineers is multi-threaded. Um, so I'm pretty sure it is because when I had the BFSA fully in, pla in place here on, on this world, it was certainly using more than one thread. But it was probably using at least at least four, if not six or more. I I, I couldn't really uh, tell because I usually have about twenty other things open in the background of my computer. Um, but well, with engineers is concerned, it's pretty much game engine limit limiting. To be honest, like the physical game engine itself, while it was using more threads, it still wouldn't fully utilize my hardware because it was just reaching some pretty hard in-game limits. Uh, think of the original Source engine, for example. Like games will run on that pretty much uh, flawlessly on almost any hardware, even very old hardware. But when you start, when you run the source, any kind of source-based game, whether it's Half-Life 2, Gary's Mod, I think I think Gary's Mod's the perfect example here, where it, you will just, you can run the game on absolutely maximum settings. There's absolutely no issue, um, but it won't. Well, it's very easy to overload that game. If you know what I mean? It's very easy to cause that game just to lag beyond recognition. Um, pretty much because it's just an, it's just an old engine. It just won't use um, the hardware to its fullest potential. Plus, I. Actually, I kind of think the Source engine is uh, single-threaded as well, but I don't know. Uh, as far as single-threaded games and game engines are concerned, Source is pretty good. Um, so anyway, uh, rambling aside off with that, um, because I'm emptying this, um, I'm emptying my save, right? Uh, my Space Engineer save, because when I switch computers, that save will be lost. Um, I will be doing videos on any sort of nearly finished or semi-finished projects that I have kicking around in the world. I've, I've been flying around my world uh, to see what's what. Where is, is there any kind of projects kicking around that I might be able to uh, make a video on? And I found about half a dozen vehicles, ships, and a couple stations, uh, which were meant for release, but just ne never got around to it. And especially since I'm, I'm like, mm, my new CPU, I think, uh, which is the last bit I've been waiting for, is on its way today, actually. Uh, I'm going to be batch recording all these things. Now, uh, another thing I will disclaim, these items that I'm going to make videos on, they will not be on the workshop. It's purely because if I was to put them on the workshop and everything, I would have to do that now after like every time like I finish a video right I finish doing the batch record that's fine but then I would have to release said objects uh, station whatever uh, to the workshop now the problem is I would say a lot of people would stumble across these creations before I've technically released the video for them so it's like if people know my uh, Steam, for example, or have have me like I don't know, they follow my creations, that kind of thing. Well, whatever the term is uh, on the Steam Workshop, then you're going to be able to access unreleased content, essentially unreleased because, uh, in the sense, I haven't actually put the video out uh, showcasing it, which that's usually when something is quote quote released. So that's pretty much it. There might there might very well be a way to like release something but hide. The item on the workshop just temporarily. There might be an option to do that. I don't know if there is. So just, temp just I'm, I'm just simply going to say the there will be videos on various stuff coming out, but they will pretty much just be a video, not releasing the workshop. And I'm afraid that does also include said cargo ship, which I know I've been you know talking about for so long. Um, there will be a, an in-depth in video on it, 
but it's not on the workshop. So it's just it's just a bit of a sad truth. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I was going on about. There will also be a video of me going going and like uh, building up my uh, uh, new computer and basically just trying to give some rationale behind why I'm side um, like I said, it's a side grade going from Ryzen seven to the i7 8700K base computer, it's very much a side grade. They, like, depending on your workload, they are pretty much trading blows with each other. And, I mean, okay, Ryzen for the price is still better for, um, for your rent, your heavy multi threaded stuff, your rendering, that kind of stuff. Uh, Intel does still have the playing card of high performance single threaded. And, well, to put a long story short, I'm also going to be uh, aiming for the 5 gigahertz sweet spot. As I've already got myself, you know, liquid cooling and all the rest, so I've already got that out the way. So I am aiming for five gigahertz as well, and all the rest. It's just, I don't know. That's mainly bragging rights at this point. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I've, I haven't put you all to sleep. But like I said, I just needed to get some information out there to, just to keep you guys in the loop. You know, to tell you what's going on as far as the channel's concerned and videos and all the rest. So like I said, um, this solar panel, which I have been wandering around. And walking over, and I even showed the what was left of that lone survivor station in this um, dedicated solar world, as I've called it. Uh, the solar panel, solar array, um, the Hex SA or Hexa, uh, which I'm probably going to nickname this thing. Uh, it's in the workshop, so feel free to uh, use it and let me know if you found a use for it. Um, I suppose here's the thing: uh, if anyone's if anyone's really good at building. Um, uh, ground-based solar arrays that will, that follow the sun, which use that script. You know, you know, either the following so the following sun script, whatever it is. If someone could make one of these big um, he um, hexes or hex solar panels, if you can stick this thing on a moon, for example, I don't, I wouldn't expect you to put this on a planet because this thing weighs so much. Um, put this on the moon, for example. Uh, and get it to follow the sun using that script. And if you can make something like that, uh, send me the link to it. I or like on the workshop, or a, or if you make a video showing it, because I'm kind of curious. Can you actually make a, a solar array of this magnitude, even mobile on a planet? I'm kind of curious. So let me know what you, if you can do that um, down below. And right, okay, rambling over. Just like I said, various links to things and workshop and Discord in the description. And yes, okay, so. Just expect some quite expect quite a few Space Engineers videos uh, to come, but like I said, nothing is technically released because batch record because workshop. I've explained. Okay, right. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.